Okay, team, let's rewind. Here's what's been happening on Ghost Rider. The facts. First, Ghost Rider has been traveling back in time to the year 1928. Going back and forth between 1993 and 1928 has made him very weak. He's trying to help Frank and Catherine, who lived in Jamal's house 65 years ago. Frank's been accused of stealing a silver tea set from his foster family, the Canellans. Dr. Canellan says he's going to send Frank to the home for wayward boys. And Ghost Rider says it's very important to prove that Frank is innocent. It will save the team. This is our strangest case yet. So he asks the team to teach Frank and Catherine how to solve a case. The team decides. So the most important thing we could teach Frank and Catherine is how to make a case book, because that's the best way to start piecing the puzzle. Piecing the puzzle? Organizing stuff, getting it together. Then, the team sends instructions on how to make a case book, and Frank and Catherine come up with a list of suspects. Mrs. O'Boyle, the housekeeper, and Lucy, Catherine's sister, don't like Frank. Also, Mr. Izzo, the coal man, delivered coal to the house. And Midlard Fillmore Smith, a Ritter brush man who also visited the house. Plus, Catherine finds some really big clues. Silver stolen from three houses in Brooklyn. And... It's a footprint and it's made of coal dust. The coal man was here yesterday before he made his delivery. Frank and Catherine decide to spy on the coal man. What will happen to Frank and Catherine? Will Frank have to go to the home for wayward boys? Is Ghost Rider strong enough to keep traveling through time? Get a pencil in your case book out and start piecing the puzzle because the Ghost Rider team is on the case. Why are you two kids following me? What's your beef? Press down, you big palooka, before you hurt somebody. Yeah. You okay, Catherine? Yes. Jeepers, kid. You pack an awful wallop. There's more where that came from, you dirty crook. Crook? That's right. We know you stole that silver tea set from my house. Yeah, and we know about the silver bird cage you swiped from the other houses, too. So you Dr. Canellan's kids? We have nothing to say to you give us back what's ours. Now you kids are cuckoo. I've been delivering coal on this beat since before you were born. Why do I all of a sudden start looting houses? Ah, uh, bushwa. Yeah, bushwa. You pups are starting to get on my nerves. I didn't steal nothing. Okay. Then show us what you got in the sack if you're so innocent. It's a loaf of bread, see? And I didn't swipe it. The Giggeries always give me something for my lunch. Right decent of them, if you ask me. What about the footprint? Hold up your dogs. What for? Just quit your griping and do it. You're a tough little cuss, aren't you? No. His foot's much bigger than the footprint we found. Sorry, Mr. So. Yeah, it was wrong. And I'm awful sorry I clipped you. I tell you what, you're a tough little cuss. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go inside and have my lunch. If I can still chew. <laughs> well, that knocks out our number one suspect. Now what do we do? Keep looking, that's what. What's the use? We're never going to catch the thief. Don't say that. I ain't going home for wayward boys. I'll run away first. I mean it. I'll run away. Man, this police gazette is awesome. It's full of great stories about killer pirates, safe-cracking crooks, and starving chorus girls who turn to a life of crime. <laughs> yeah, that stuff is right up your alley. Yeah, I love these kind of stories. Your grandma told me you boys were down there cleaning up. Looks more like messing up to me. Hey, Dad. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. What happened? Uh, I got dizzy and nauseous at work. Nah, I just need a little rest. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Well, I'm gonna go lie down. I'll expect this place to be straightened out by the time I get up. Hmm? Sure, Dad. Dad! Dad, what's wrong? Grandma! Grandma, come quick! Dad's in trouble! Sorry 
I cried. It's okay. Everybody's got to cry sometime. Not where I come from. When you live in the streets, you have to be tough all the time, or you won't survive. Just because you cry doesn't mean you're not tough. A tough guy is someone who keeps trying, no matter how bad things look. Now, are you going to be tough enough to keep trying till we find out who the real thief is? Catherine, it's hopeless. No, it isn't. We still have Mrs. O'Boyle and Lucy as our suspects. And look at this. We still haven't found Miller Fillmore Smith yet. He was in the house right before the tea set was stolen. He could be the crumb we're after. Yeah, that's what we said about the coal man. And we were dead wrong. I might as well... If you run away, Frank Flynn, you're just a coward. Hey, I'm no coward. And I guess we better be getting back on the case. Come on, we got no time to waste. I'm not going to the hospital, Mom. Jamal, do me a favor. Go get my car keys. They're on the kitchen table. I just got dizzy. I don't need to go. You should take a jacket in case you get a chill. I'm not going anywhere. I just need some rest. Here are your keys, Grandma. Thank you, baby. Now give this jacket to your father. Is anybody listening to me? No, huh? no, because you're delirious. I am not delirious. Of course you are. Everyone knows you need to see a doctor. I know. Your wife knows. Don't you think he needs to see a doctor, Jamal? Yes. Mm, don't you think he needs to see a doctor, Alex? Well, yeah. I, you shouldn't be afraid to go to the doctor, Mr. Jenkins. Afraid? There, it's unanimous. We all agree. No more arguments. Let's go. I give up. I give up. It's always easier that way, dear heart. Jamal, lock the door. Oh, no, I'm coming with you. Okay, hurry up. Uh, Jamal, don't worry about the case. We'll take care of it. I hope your dad feels better. Thanks, man. No problem. Alex, when you leave, slam the door. Yes, I'm sure his name is Millard Fillmore Smith. I remember because he's named after my favorite president. Yes, yes, I'm positive he's a Ritter Brushman. Well, he sold me this feather duster yesterday, and now it looks like a plucked chicken. Oh, all right then. Goodbye. Spill it. The Ritter Brush Company says they have no such salesman by the name of Miller Fillmore Smith. It was a dopey idea anyway. What robber would come to your house and give you his real name? That's it! Why didn't I think of this before? Because what? If this guy really is a crook pretending to be a salesman to get into other people's houses, he would make up a fake name. If that's true, and we can prove he's the real thief, then I'll be off the hook. Well, what have you two been up to? Why are you so filthy? Don't blame Catherine. It's all my doing. No, no, it isn't, Father. We were trailing the coal man, thinking he was a thief that robbed our house, and when we jumped in the back of the truck... Have you both lost your minds? Running around in the streets, playing detectives, jumping in and out of coal trucks? You could have been hurt. But, but we're fine, and we think we know who stole the tea set. I don't was... want to hear any more about it. Now, I've just come from the home for wayward boys. It's all set. But... They'll be taking you there tomorrow. No, but, Father, we think we know who stole the tea... Catherine, that's enough. Go to your room. Dr. Canellan. What is it? I just wanted to say how sorry I am. I didn't mean for Catherine to do anything dangerous. It's much too late for apologies, Frank. Jamal, there is nothing for you to worry about. Then how come you or Mom won't tell me what Dr. Hughes said? We told you. He said everything will be all right. But I overheard him telling you all that of something about an x-ray before you went to his office. Oh, that's nothing for you to worry about, baby. I'm not a baby anymore. I have the right to know what's wrong with my father. OK. Sit down. I, I'm sorry I yelled. Well, you don't have to be sorry. You do have a right to know. When Dr. Hughes looked at your father's x-rays, he saw some sort of a shadow over his heart. A shadow? Yeah, a dark spot that shouldn't be there. 
So they decided to keep him in the hospital overnight and run some more tests in the morning. Is that all he said? Yes, that is all. You don't have to worry, Jamal. Your father is going to be all right. How do you know? I just do. Now, let me go get dinner started. Grandma? Yes? If you're not worried, then how can you send Dad to the hospital? Because I'm his mother, Jamal. And when you're a parent, you have to make sure everything is okay. Your mother does the same thing for you, right? Yeah, I guess so. You know so. being sent away in the morning. We failed. Frank goes writer. If we give up now, Frank, we'll never be saved. But I don't know what to do. You made the right decision, Dr. Canal. Frank's a bad penny and he always will be. But I feel so bad about sending him away. How to think of something before it's too late. Don't give up now. being seen. I'm glad you came by to say goodbye. Wait a minute. Goodbye? We haven't even solved this case yet. Face it, Catherine. It's time to give up. But wait, we can't give up. If we do, you'll be sent away and we'll never see each other again. That's the worst part about it. I'm gonna miss having a friend as good as you. Then we gotta keep on plugging. We can't find the Ritter brushman over the telephone. We can't get out of the house. We can't do anything. But wait, what about Ghost Rider and these friends? They can help us. They can't help. They live in the future. But that's why they can help. They can find out if this case was ever solved. Huh? Remember we went to the library this morning? We looked at last week's newspapers to see about crimes that had already happened, right? Right. Well, since Ghost Rider's friends live in the future, they can look back on newspapers from 1928 to see if this case was ever solved and who did it. What good will that do? They can send us the name of the thief and, and maybe even where he was captured. Yeah, and then we'll know who the thief is. We'll know where we can catch him. Right, exactly. Give me the case book here. We have to fill them in on everything we know. All right, tell them ab about the other robbers, too. Oh, and tell them about Millard Fillmore Smith. You know, the Ritter Brushman. Right. Was the Police Gazette a real newspaper? Yep, and all the stories were true. I wonder if Catherine and Frank read them. Do you think Frank and Catherine solved the case yet? I hope not. Why? How can you say that? Because if they already solved their case, Ghost Rider should be back. But he's not. So I hope they're still working on it. And as soon as they finish, Ghost Rider can come home. Finished. All right, read it out loud. Dear future friends, many houses around us have been robbed of valuable things made of silver. Our main suspect is pretending to be a litter brush salesman. He says his name is Millard Fillmore Smith. We think he's using a fake name. Please read old issues of the Brooklyn Eagle, printed in 1928. Find out if the case was solved, and if so, 
Who's the crook? Please hurry. Thank you, Frank and Catherine. That's great. Uh-oh. I don't think this is gonna work. Oh, I know. Look at Ghost Rider. The message must be too long. Remember when Ghost Rider came back from the future last time? Well, he was real tired. Carrying this many words must be too hard for him. Maybe he'll be able to carry it if we make the message shorter. We'll cut out everything but the most important parts. The crime, the suspects, and what we want them to do. Good idea. All right. Houses were robbed of silver. That's a crime. Our suspect is a Ritter Brushman who calls himself Millard Fillmore Smith. But we think he's an imposter. Imposter? What's that? A person who pretends to be someone else. Criminals in the Police Gazette are always changing their name and wearing disguises to try and fool the police. Well, maybe we can just write imposter down with a question mark next to it. So then they'll know that we're not sure. Okay. The next part, we should just write down the bare facts of the job we need them to do. Read the Brooklyn Eagles, printed in 1928. Was the case ever solved? And who did it? How's this? Well, it's everything important, but is it short enough for Ghost Rider to take back? Frank and Catherine. I'll copy it into the case book. Crime. Houses robbed. Silver. This must be connected to their case. There's more. What's for it a brush man? I don't know. Imposter? Or a magazine. Was case solved? Who did it? I think we better get to the library and find out the information that Frank and Catherine need. And we better be quick. Look at the last word. I hope Ghost Rider's friends can help us. So do I. But all we can do now is wait. I don't have much time. Frank. Promise me you won't run away no matter what happens. Don't worry about me, Catherine. Promise? I promise. Thanks. I better get back upstairs before someone discovers I'm missing. Research coming on your next book. Oh, it's fascinating. It's just fascinating. Who's your criminal this time? You're gonna have to read the book to find that out. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Mm hmm. Good. Bye bye. Bye. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you okay? <laughs> Don't you worry, kiddo. I'm a tough old girl. Can you tell us what a Ritter Brushman is? Yes, he's a salesman who goes door to door selling household items like brushes, mops, things like that. Have you ever heard of a book or magazine called uh, Brooklyn Eagle? Oh, sure. The Brooklyn Eagle was a very popular newspaper. I never heard of it before. Well, they stopped printing it around 1955. Now we'll never find them. This library carries old copies of the Brooklyn Eagle and ledgers. They're very old and fragile, but if you promise to handle them very carefully... We promise. What year are you interested in? 1928. Follow me.
Hey, look at this, Alex. Yankees win the World Series. All right, my favorite baseball team were the champs in 1928. Look, you guys, we gotta start piecing the puzzle, okay? Frank and Catherine need this information fast, remember? Piecing the puzzle. Get organized. Oh, I like that. Hey, I've got an idea that'll make the search go even faster. What is it? Let's only look for the headlines about crimes. Headlines tell what the story's about in a few words. Right. Look for headlines with words like... Robberies, silver, and imposters. Here it is. Masked robber revealed. What does the article say? Masked bank robber Muggs Milligan was trapped on the rooftop of the first bank of Flatbush. But we're not looking for a bank robber from Flatbush. Yeah, I guess this isn't it after all. Good try, Alex. Let's keep searching. I think I found it. Youngsters helped capture Ritter Brush Imposter. Raynard Wilcox, who pretended to be a Ritter Brushman named Millard Fillmore Smith, was captured July 12th at the Silver Imports Warehouse. He was charged with robbing several homes in Brooklyn. So Raynard Wilcox is the imposter's real name. And he was captured in the Silver Imports Warehouse. Wait, there's more. The police were aided by a tip from two Fort Green children, Catherine Cannon and Frank Flynn. When asked how they were able to crack the case, the kids mysteriously replied that they couldn't have done it without the help of some friends who are far ahead of their time. Hey, they were talking about us. We're the ones who are far ahead of our time. That is so cool. We're in the newspaper more than 50 years before we were born. Awesome. Hey, something strange is happening. I just finished writing down Catherine and Frank's name, and now they've disappeared from the newspaper. The headline's gone, too. How can that happen? Is Ghost Rider taking the words away? No, Ghost Rider's resting in my house. Maybe the past is changing because we haven't sent Catherine and Frank this information yet. Huh? If we don't send this information to Frank and Catherine soon, it'll be too late. This article will never even exist. And Rainer Wilcox won't be captured. Huh? I'll explain later. How come I'm the only one who doesn't get it? You better hurry and get this information to Ghost Rider. Why don't we just send it to him from here? Because he's resting. Yeah, we got the legs, so let's use them. Jamal! Come in. What's wrong? Where are you going? To the hospital. Is it dad? Your mom says he's unconscious. They can't wake him up. Because of his heart? I I'm not sure. I'm going with you. No, Jamal. Look, Grandma, I, I want to be with my dad. And besides, you're going to be there, and Mom is already there. All right, let's hurry. OK, Ghost Rider, it's up to you. He's too weak. But if he doesn't get this information back to 1928, Frank and Catherine won't be able to solve the case. I don't care about the case. I care about Ghost Rider. He just can't do it. Gabby, Ghost Rider said helping Frank and Catherine would save the team. Tina's right. Let's see if we can make the message shorter and say all the important stuff. It might be easier for him to carry. Call police. Catch, imposter, Reynard, Wilcox, at Silver, Imports, Warehouse, July, Ghost Rider tried, but he can't do it. He's trying to tell us something. L. K. Become Doc. Tur. Must. I think he's trying to say, must help Frank become a doctor. 
He wants us to keep trying. What does Frank becoming a doctor have to do with the team? His last name is Flynn. Do you go to Dr. Flynn? No. Me neither. Never heard of him. And I'm almost done making this message as short as I can. Okay, team, let's rewind. Here's what's been happening on Ghost Rider. The facts. First, Ghost Rider has been traveling back in time to the year 1928. Going back and forth between 1993 and 1928 has made him very weak. He's trying to help Frank and Catherine, who lived in Jamal's house 65 years ago. Frank's been accused of stealing a silver tea set from his foster family, the Canellans. Dr. Canellan says he's going to send Frank to the home for wayward boys. And... Ghost Rider says it's very important to prove that Frank is innocent. It will save the team. This is our strangest case yet. So we ask the team to teach Frank and Catherine how to solve a case. The team decides. So the most important thing we could teach Frank and Catherine is how to make a case book. Because that's the best way to start piecing the puzzle. Piecing the puzzle? Organizing stuff, getting it together. Then, the team sends instructions on how to make a case book. And Frank and Catherine come up with a list of suspects. Mrs. O'Boyle, the housekeeper, and Lucy, Catherine's sister, don't like Frank. Also, Mr. Izzo, the coal man, delivered coal to the house. And Midler Fillmore Smith, a Ritter brush man who also visited the house. Plus, Catherine finds some really big clues. Silver stolen from three houses in Brooklyn. And it's a footprint and it's made of coal dust. The coal man was here yesterday before he made his delivery. Frank and Catherine decide to spy on the coal man. What will happen to Frank and Catherine? Will Frank have to go to the home for wayward boys? Is Ghost Rider strong enough to keep traveling through time? Get a pencil in your casebook out and start piecing the puzzle, because the Ghost Rider team is on the case. Why are you two kids following me? What's your beef? Put us down, you big palooka, before you hurt somebody. You okay, Catherine? Yes. Jeepers, kid. You pack an awful wallop. There's more where that came from, you dirty crook. Crook? That's right. We know you stole that silver tea set from my house. Yeah, and we know about the silver bird cage you swiped from the other houses, too. So you Dr. Canellan's kids? We have nothing to say to you give us back what's ours. Oh, you kids are cuckoo. I've been delivering coal on the 